two writers, one just starting out, the other a bestseller. Join James Blatch and Mark Dawson and their amazing guests as they discuss how you can make a living telling stories. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello, welcome to the Self Publishing Formula Podcast. Yes, it's James Blatch and Mark Dawson with you for another instalment of a fascinating insight into the world of indie publishing, the Value Packed Podcast. That's what we like to think, right, Mark? And we are value packed, huh? We are value packed, absolutely. We're full of something. We are absolutely full of something. Uh, and that thing is value. Okay, good. Well, we've got a good episode today because it's something that uh, a lot of us have thought about and uh, I've recently tried, starting to getting into it. I know that you're quite interested in it as well. Uh, it's to do with productivity, but um, uh, also can solve some other issues in your life, particularly physical ailments that do strike writers. It is, after all, the ultimate sedentary, sedentary, sedentary uh, occupation. So we're gonna look at dictation. And uh, there's one major product on the market that seems to dominate this space, which is called Dragon. And it comes in various guises. And uh, there's an English guy who has emerged as a bit of an, uh, an expert in this area called Scott. And he's, he's got a book, an ebook uh, on the subject. And uh, he has very, very kindly put together a brilliant Dragon cheat sheet for us. So if you're interested in trying this out, giving it a go, uh, you can download the uh, the Dragon cheat sheet at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash download 60, download 602 digits. Have you tried dictation before, Mark? Um, not with Dragon. I have used my phone occasionally. I'll do um, I'll answer emails. If I'm just kind of wandering around, I'll answer emails um, with dictation. And that's getting more and more accurate. Um, Apple's pretty good at that these days. Um, you can you know, use it reasonably accurately and say it saves a bit of time with faffing around with the screen, but I've never actually used it to write. Is that via Siri? Um, I don't know if it's it's the same technology as Siri. Yeah. You basically, you know, hit the microphone and instead of typing, you can speak. That, that's it's getting better and better. Yeah. Well, there's a few authors in our community who uh, use Dragon uh, a lot, and others who've taken it up recently. I had a bit of correspondence with Claire Sager, who's somebody who came down and did one of our 101. Uh, interviews in London um, and Claire found uh, she took to it quite quickly so I was quite encouraged reading about her experiences with Dragon and let's face it you know we worry a lot about our productivity about our word count about getting the job done the basic job uh, which sometimes feels a chore and other times feels a pleasure but it's difficult to know and if there's a way of making it an easier process of getting what's in your mind onto the page I think we're all for it so Let's go to this interview then with Scott Baker, and I say he's from the UK. Uh, he's made um, understanding Dragon and being an enthusiast for it, but also a realist about what it can do and what it can't do, um, made it his, uh, his aim in life. So uh, let's listen to Scott and then we'll be back. I'm Scott Baker and I wrote a book called The Writer's Guide to Training Your Dragon, uh, which is uh, basically a guide to, uh, it's, it's specifically aimed at writers, uh, a guide to getting Dragon to be as accurate as possible and to, to blow up your, your word count and, and your writing workflow. Okay, well, let me uh, set my own stall out here. So um, you'll mm -hmm. know uh, from the podcast that I'm uh, writing my first book at the moment. I'm mm -hmm. looking at um, different ways of increasing productivity, but actually I have just purchased um, Dragon. I read up your advice right. and notes. I'm a Mac person, so I have bought oh. the PC version <laughs> and running, oh, running on Parallels because I took your advice. <laughs> For that very Excellent. reason. So we'll, we'll come on to the details in a moment. Um, I, I, I've, I've played with it a couple of times, and um, in fact, I have my little uh, uh, Bluetooth ah, headset that came yes. with it, which I'm, I'm not yep. wholly f uh, familiar with yet. Um, right. And just the reason, I think the reason I bought it, I think everyone's going to be different on this, and sometimes it is mm. purely about productivity. In part, it is because I get very little time to write at the moment, maybe six hours a week, and I need to make the most of that. But okay. I found in the past, when I wrote scripts for the BBC, for instance, I walked about. I would leave my desk, yes. I'd wander around the room, coming up with the scripts, so I'd sit down and then type it out. And I thought, well, maybe I'll write better being able to stand up and think and imagine the conversations and so on. So that's what I'm excited about getting into for Dragon. Other people yeah. will purely be looking at the stories of word counts going exponentially mm -hmm. up. 
Um, so let's let's before we get into too much of the technical detail, let's hear from mm. you as a sort of dragon guru uh, of the main advantages of why people should be thinking about switching to dictation. Well, uh, you, you know, you've mentioned the word count side of things, and I think if, like yourself, you're restricted in the time you've got to actually write, then Dragon is is fantastic because obviously it, it completely blows up the word count you can achieve in a very short space of time. Um, and with something like transcription, which I'm sure we'll mention later, um, you can do it pretty much anywhere, you know, so it, it's another level again of, of productivity. But the other side of it, um, and probably the main reason, or one of the, one of the main reasons that I first got into it was, was because of injury. Um, and I, I kind of regard Dragon as an insurance policy now against RSI and, and whatever else. I mean, the horror stories, you know, I, I know of, of people who've had horrific RSI and, and you know, wrist problems and have had to have operations. Uh, they've been un- unable to even open a door, you know, uh, for, for months at a time, all because of sitting hammering away at a keyboard. And when I was, uh, well, a good few years ago, I, I always thought RSI would get me, and it, and it didn't. It was actually sitting at a desk all day, being sedentary uh, was the problem. My posture did me in, and I ended up with um, herniated discs in my back. So I ended up as someone who had to earn a living from writing. I was a freelance writer at the time. Uh, I, I suddenly found that I couldn't write. I literally could not sit at a desk and type. And I, you know, I couldn't hold a keyboard in the air and do that. It was ridiculous. So I had to find a way of continuing to, you know, earn a living. Basically, it wasn't just about word count anymore. It was literally about you know keeping the lights on. So what happened was, luckily, before I had this injury, I'd actually started using Dragon pretty seriously just to get um, my productivity up because a lot of the, the articles I, I was writing, I've never been a fast typist, and I was always up against deadlines. So I'd started looking into, dead, into Dragon anyway to, to hit those deadlines. And luckily, I'd already trained Dragon, I'd already got it to a point where it was really accurate, and then, of course, I have this injury. So from there on, it, it just transformed everything. I, I suddenly realized that this isn't just about productivity, this is also about looking after yourself as a writer, uh, and recognizing that the tools you have as a writer, your physical tools, your hands, your fingers, your back, all of these things can be absolutely done in by such a, a sedentary activity as writing itself. So, you know, it, it became an insurance policy. I got really sort of addicted then to, to delve in as deep as possible into how to get this thing crazy accurate um and the rest is history so so that's where i come from with dragon and and that's where i think even if someone's a really fast typist i hear a lot of people saying well i can you know i can bang out 120 words a minute that's great but what happens when you can't you know what happens when you know fate plays its hand and bang you suddenly can't write you can't earn a living and that's what happened to me and and so i think it's useful to just have it in your arsenal just like anything else yeah Okay, so I mean, there are that, that's a greater argument for why it's it's useful to have it there, and there are writers, mm. and you know, I've been speaking to a couple online as I've mm. starting to uh, to make my choices about the software and so on, uh, who are purely switching over to it because they write a lot and they don't have particular problems at the moment, but they want to explore doing it in a better way. So it's definitely something yeah. that everyone can um, can try. So um, the transition from mm. writing on a keyboard to dictation is not mm. a straightforward one. I mean, I can tell you just from my early forays, it feels strange, <laughs> it feels yeah. weird, and I, I yeah. know it's not going to... I'm not going to be looking at a super high productivity word count in the next couple of weeks. It's going to take longer. <laughs> right. I think. I, I, I don't know. I'm not so sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I have literally depends. used it on two sessions having just installed the software, so I'm at yeah. r- mega early stage. You're not there yet. You're, no. you're not there yet. You're, you're a dragon virgin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it will come. It will come. I, I think it comes surprisingly quickly, but you have to commit. You really have to commit to it, and that is the key. You have to 
not view it as something you have to do. You have to not view it as something that's, you know, a, a pain to do. You have to just go, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it for all the right reasons. And that could be productivity. That could be injury. It could be both. It could be prevention of injury, whatever. But I think it's a bit like buying a new keyboard. You know, there's, there's people out there who absolutely swear by mechanical keyboards, these big clacky things, you know. And I hate them. I can't stand this. <laughs> I actually got nostalgic about them recently. And I thought, oh, I'll get myself one. I mean, I, you could literally hear it outside the house when I was typing on it. It was one of these old IBM type ones. And I thought, that's got to go back. That's got to go back. But I know people who swear by them. So all of these tools are subjective. I think you have to just decide to use it as a tool. Bring it into your life. You know, accept, it into, accept Dragon into your life and, and roll with it. And I think the first way of doing that is to just get used to dictation itself. So never mind, you know, how accurate it is initially. Never mind all of these things. You know, is my equipment set up right? Just get used to the act, the actual act of dictating. Um, and one of the, the ways to do that is to just use one of these, use your smartphone as much as you can. You know, dictate into that, dictate your texts, dictate emails, do web searches. You quickly get used to the act of speaking to a machine. You know, it, it and it's strange how quickly that becomes second nature. It's just about unlocking that. And I'm of the opinion that, you know, we, we are, we're not typists, we're writers, okay? No one who's a writer um, has lost the ability or will lose the ability to tell stories because they're dictating it <laughs> instead of, you know, typing it. I think we've got to get over that notion that a keyboard is the only way we can perform writing because it's ridiculous once upon a time used to people used to dip feathers in ink you know and, and and write that way so what i found strangely is that i mean i've got used to it obviously i couldn't live without it now i can't i can't type now i just can't do it i'm too slow uh, i'm too slow typing i find it unproductive so i dictate pretty much everything now um and i think what you find is is that will happen to you in time, you know, especially if you're the sort of person who does maybe struggle a little bit with with uh, typing speed, uh, you'll find it just blows up your word count, and it it happens very quickly. But you have to commit to it, and you have to use it as much as you can across as many different mediums as you can. With Dragon being the time where you just knuckle down and and write and just do word count as opposed to everything else. But that's not to say you shouldn't use it on your computer for everything else as well. So, I mean, you should also dictate, again, your blog posts, your forum posts, your Facebook posts, emails, everything. Just just use it all the time and you very quickly find that, you know, you're off and running in no time and you suddenly can't live without it. Okay, let's talk um, about the choices people make when they want to move into this area, want to try it out. Mm. Uh, actually, the first okay. thing I found is it's quite confusing. Dragon have quite a number of different products and uh, for the uninitiated... Um, and I did find the Facebook group that you... I don't know if it's your Facebook group. So there's, a, there's a Dragon Facebook group you frequent, certainly. and um, Dragon Riders. Dragon Riders. Yeah. I found that very useful it's indeed. Mine. It's not yours, but you're, yeah. you're a key voice on that, that group. Um, yeah. And uh, I found that very useful to try and navigate my way through. And in fact, I took your direct advice in the end, as I said earlier, in making my right. product choice. But um, it was a bit confusing. I don't, think, mm. I don't think these software companies really help themselves when they, they give you eight choices of how to buy the same product. Um, no. It often just puts people off. But uh, so how can uh, I suppose the major choice is how was I going to how is it going to get from voice to keyboard? So there's there's one mm. option, which is this little Bluetooth yep. uh, headset you sort of wear around there. You see, you see taxi drivers wearing them. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can talk independently into a little recorder and mm -hmm. uh, and then download it afterwards. You can use your smartphone for that to record onto it. Uh, there's another sort yep. of cheaper headset, I think, boom mic headset uh, way Correct. of doing it. I'm, I guess the answer to this is it's up to you as an individual. Well, are any mm. of these the right thing to be looking at or the wrong thing to be looking at? It's bewildering. Isn't it? It's bewildering. And it doesn't help that, like you say, there's so many versions of the actual software as well. Um, but to break it down in really simple terms for the majority of people, okay, there are, firstly, the software. There are two versions that should be on everyone's radar. The one, one is Dragon Naturally Speaking Premium version 13. Okay, so that is the current consumer version. It's actually a few years old. 
but it's the current consumer version of the software. I better make sure um, what I've bought now. Let me reach for it. Oh, 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 oh no. Don't say it's the wrong one. That looks right. Is that right? Premium. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's the one. Thank goodness. So there's that one, and you've got the one there with the Bluetooth headset. So there's certain uh, versions of it which come with headsets and whatever. Uh, you're going to hate me with a passion here, but okay. I, I wouldn't buy any of those ones personally. Thanks. I would just buy the basic. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't worry. You've, you've still done the right thing. You've still got the right software. Um, but I would just buy the software as is and then pick whatever headset you need because a lot of the headsets that uh, Nuance provide are actually uh, pretty pretty poor. They're actually not very good quality. I'm not sure about that Bluetooth one you've got, um, but some of the wired headsets they put in the boxes are dreadful. Um, the uh, other version of the software is actually Dragon Professional Individual uh, version 15. Uh, there was a 14, but it was basically the same as 13, so just forget it ever existed. And all Dragon Professional Individual 15 does is um, the, the, it, it brings in a new engine called the Deep Learning Recognition Engine. Is it any better than version 13? Uh, I, I'm yet to be convinced. It's substantially more expensive. I think you'll have, pro I don't know how much you will have paid for that, but. Mm, I, um, I, I got it to 49 to something like that. So oh, right. That okay. about right? Ooh, that, about too no, much. That's pretty expensive. Maybe it's one I mean, you can pick, okay. You can probably pick up that version on its own now for about 70 or 80 pounds. Without the um, Bluetooth headset. Without the headset. And, I think uh, I, but, but, I, but that's another thing. I'm trying to remember how much. I saw so many prices. Yeah. And like oh, you say, totally. even you're an expert and you're trying to work out, is it worth it? Is it worth it? How, how, I, don't, I stood no chance really looking at something that's three hundred and fifty <laughs> yep. pounds and ninety nine pounds. Which one I should yep. buy? Yeah, I mean it's crazy. But but that version of the software, version premium thirteen for PC for Windows, is about eighty pounds ish. Uh, it even goes for around the same amount in dollars. It's about eighty dollars as well. Um, now Dragon Professional Individual fifteen, the new the new version, is uh, about three hundred pounds. Is it worth the difference? Probably. I would say no. I would say for most people, no. The other version of the software is Dragon for the Mac, which is currently on version 6. And that is an absolute, uh, well, it's a bit of a disaster at the minute. It's, it's a buggy mess. And I recommend, uh, like yourself, if you're using a Mac to just run the PC version of the software using Parallels. When it comes to, or, or Boot Camp, when it comes to uh, microphones, it's down to personal preference. Uh, we've got, I mean, I'm using a, a bit like your podcast microphone there. Is that an Audio Technica or something? It's actually there? a Rode NT-USB. Oh, well, that's what I'm using. So okay. we're both using the same mic right now. Um, something like that is going to give you fantastic recognition. It's just, a, it's just a great quality mic. You're looking for something that ideally is used by musicians, vocalists, anything that, that provides really clean quality audio. Um, and the Rode NT USB, I think the Audio Technica 802020, I think it's called, uh, USB, the Blue Yeti. These are all really good mics for like, you know, £99, $100-ish mark. The, the quality is crazy for the price. They're fantastic quality. Yeah. I Not mean, everybody wants a desktop mic, obviously. Not everybody wants to be sat at a desktop. Some people want a headset, as you say. Um, and again, there's, there's terrible headsets. There's decent headsets. Uh, if you stick to something by uh, Andrea Electronics or Plantronics, they're usually fine. The, the, one, the one constant in all of this is to always go for USB wired. So wired USB headsets or wired USB desktop mics. I personally don't uh, recommend Bluetooth on the whole because the quality just it isn't there. Um, and the, the, the recognition suffers as a result. And what, what you tend to find, there are a few, and that one you've got might be okay because it's actually, it comes with the package, but there are a few Bluetooth headsets which work okay, work well, but you have to use the dongle that's included with them. Um, it, they just won't give you the same level of recognition if you just use the built-in Bluetooth on your PC or Mac. So that's kind of the, you know, the quick guide. Basically, there's two or three versions of the software to worry about and everything else can be discarded. And then it just comes down to personal preference. But for the most part, um, USB wired is, is the way to go. So on a slightly related note, does anybody mm. want to buy a USB barely used 
<laughs> headset particularly if you're a taxi driver maybe you might find that <laughs> don't says, give up on it says dragon on the side do you know i hate wearing it and it's disconnected several times using it but i haven't used the dongle i've right. um i've connected directly to the i didn't see the point of using the dongle but now you mentioned that maybe it does need to go through the dongle but actually i mean this is on a boom this is on mm. a, an angle poise boom it actually goes quite long. i'm sitting quite a long way back from the um desk now yeah um so I'll have a little go with this, actually. And if, as long as I can stand up and move about a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be too far away from the Mac because what you end up doing, uh, certainly from my early experiences, is after a passage of dictating, going and having a little tweak of what's actually come out mm. and then doing your next section. So it's not like I want to be in the other room uh, walking about. But, uh, yeah, OK, so that's good. And anyway, that enough about me. That gives other people a good... Overview. Well, on that point, I, I actually agree. I think to be able to walk around and, and sort of flail your arms and, and get into it is, is a good thing. Um, but, you know, there are alternatives. The, 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 the number one alternative is, is um, transcription, which we'll mention in a bit, I'm sure. Um, but the other, uh, I, you know, uh, solution is to just have a really long USB cable and just plug that into your computer and, and just walk around the room with it connected to the laptop or, or whatever. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, Bluetooth can work well. Or there are wireless mics which can work well, but on the whole, you don't tend to get the same level of quality to price um, as you would with wired. And, and I just find there's certain configurations, certainly with Bluetooth, where it, it just doesn't work well at all. Okay. Um, good. So I sort of made some of the right choices, I'm quite pleased to see. Oh, yeah. Now let's, uh, <laughs> let's move on to this the, the transition. You've said just start mm. to use it. In, in more than one setting and get used to the idea of it. Can you yeah. cast your mind back to the early days of, I mean, there's there, writing is an unusual thing anyway, you know, writing Ooh. fiction in particular, and you sat at your keyboard and I use Brain FM and things, you know, to try and focus myself in that mm. area. And, uh, and your mind goes to where you're writing and all the rest of it, and you start to write the words down. Mm. It feels at the beginning fundamentally different saying stuff out loud and i need to somehow make make that transition work make it work yeah. for me w what are your sort yeah. of tips for that i think that the number one uh, thing i would recommend is to is just to not look at the screen do not look at the screen when you're doing it because it completely gets in the way of the act of writing you start to get into the act of editing as you go and uh, that, for me, is just the the, the first thing that's going to wreck your your um, your flow, if you like. I think very often when when we write, like you say, even you know, just at a keyboard, you tend to get into a flow state. You tend to get into um, a mode where the words are just coming out through your fingers, and and that's it. And the key is to transition that to. Instead of it coming out your fingers, it needs to come out of your mouth. So it needs to, you need to get into that flow state, but using dictation instead of typing. And I think for me, the way to do that is to just sit back in a chair, close my eyes and just start talking. And Dragon doesn't care about the moments of silence. You know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't recognize anything when you're doing that. It just knows you're being silent. So it's okay to, to, to be quiet. It's okay to think, it's okay to pause. But the key, I think, is to get those eyes off your screen. Because if you just sit there, I mean, I mentioned, you know, the desktop microphones. If you just sit there at a desktop, looking at the screen as it's recognizing it, and you see a mistake and straight away you want to correct that mistake, it gets you out of that flow. So I don't do that. I tend to just, you know, dictate away. That could be uh, with a long USB cable on my microphone, or it could be with a wireless headset or whatever. And so, like you, sometimes I, I walk around and flail my arms about, especially if I'm doing stuff like dialogue. I find that really useful then. I find, you know, I get into the dialogue of my characters a bit more. Um, so all of these are fine, but get out of the habit of looking at the screen, basically. Um, I just let it kind of, you know, do its thing in the background and then when I'm done, when I'm ready for a break, I'll go and sit down and I'll just scan through it. And then I'll do a quick, a super quick editing pass where I just correct any mistakes because you have to do that for Dragon to learn. In order for Dragon to get better, you have to do that. So, uh, okay. um, but I leave it till after I've finished writing. 
That's an interesting. I hadn't realised that Dragon pays attention to when you go back and correct the mistakes. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. part of its learning, right? I suppose it's that makes It's the biggest sense. problem, actually. The biggest issue I think people have, especially on the Mac version, um, because, I mean, there's many issues with the Mac version of the software. You hate the Mac version. And I, I think I think everybody hates the Mac version <laughs> who's ever used it. And and you know, I'm actually sitting to sitting talking to you right now on a MacBook Pro. You know, I'm a Mac user, I'm a PC user as well. Um uh, but there's there's just no comparison between the two pieces of software. The the Mac version is uh, it, it, it it's just too unstable. It has serious issues and it has serious functionality problems. Uh, that don't uh, exist basically on on the PC version. There's a lot more you can do with the PC version to get it crazy accurate. You know, you can drill right down into vocabulary and all sorts of things. The way you say things, the way you uh, you know certain character names, all of these sorts of things. You can't do that with the Mac version. At least you can't do it effectively. And the biggest issue is if you did you know get into like a flow state and you have a big long page full of text the Mac version struggles to go back to, to words further up the text and correct them. Um, the PC version has no issue with that at all. Uh, so I think as an overall tool, everybody is, even if you're a Mac user, everybody's better off using the PC version. Yeah. Now there are tutorials. So you're talking about going back and correcting and so on. And when you first load mm -hmm. up the software, it takes you through a basic tutorial and, and, and it sets yeah. some exercises for you. So for instance, correcting a word and how you, mm -hmm. you do that mm -hmm. and go back. Um, yeah, uh, and that's something I think you probably and I knew, need to play with a bit to become familiar with it. But another way of using it, I suppose, I mean, for start, because I'm writing on Scrivener on Mac, mm. right. uh, my workflow I'd intended to do is to have uh, a Word document which is on a Dropbox folder. Yeah. So, oh, wait, so it's actually on it's on the same machine because I'm running parallel, yeah. so I can easily. Uh, get to it from Scrivener. So it's to dictate into that Word document and then copy and paste mm. into into Scrivener. Mm. The interesting thing I've learned from this interview already is that I should be correcting within that Word document as part of the Dragon session before I copy and paste it because otherwise I stop, I stop Dragon learning how I talk. Yeah, I mean, the, the biggest issue is um, if you are using the Mac version, incidentally, uh, I don't recommend you dictate directly into anything other than uh, uh, text edit. You know, the built-in text editor with Mac OS X. Right, yeah. Um, everything else is just a disaster. It, it, it's all to do with something called full text control. Dragon needs to know where the cursor is on the screen, and it frequently just doesn't. It frequently just gets lost. So the, the cursor goes on walkabout, uh, or it'll you know suddenly insert words or letters where there weren't any. It's a disaster. So to keep things simple, and I recommend this on the PC as well, really, um, to keep things simple, dictate straight into text edit on the Mac or straight into notepad on the PC. Um, if you are using the PC version uh, in parallels on the Mac, then again, you're going to be dictating straight into notepad on the PC and then copy and paste it into, you know, Scrivener, Word, whatever your processor of choice is. But that keeps things really lean and really simple for Dragon. Um, you tend to, and it's quite a resource intensive program anyway, but what you want to do, as you as you mentioned there, is you want to, while it's still in Notepad or still in text edit, you want to make corrections with your voice. So instead of saying, you know, the, the last thing you should ever do is type, a, type over something. Don't use the keyboard, don't touch the keyboard when you're dictating, big mistake, because Dragon learns nothing then. It, you have to tell it, this is wrong. You got that wrong. And this is what I wanted you to say. So if, for example, it gets a word wrong, you would say correct and then the word or phrase. And it'll drop down a list of what it thinks the, the correction should be. And then if it's number four on the list, you just say choose four and it corrects it. And every time you do that, Dragon registers it in what's called your profile. Okay. It, say, it makes those changes, it tweaks the algorithm, and it gets crazy accurate. But, you know, you have to you have to remember to correct it. There's certain things not to worry about, things like, you know, when it gets there and there wrong, or be and the, you know, it, forget it. It's never, it's just going to get words like that wrong all the time. But when it fundamentally gets certain words or phrases wrong, just correct it with your voice every time, and, and it'll learn from it. it. It'll get more and more accurate over time. 
Um, but one of the things I, I do say in the book, and you mentioned there that the brief training exercise, one of the things the program will keep doing is pester you <laughs> to, to read its training texts that are built in. And I recommend you don't do that at all. I think that's that's just crazy, a crazy idea because Dragon, it doesn't just learn how you talk. It does, doesn't just learn your, your speaking style. It actually learns your writing style as well. So why would you dictate something written by Lewis Carroll? Because, you know, you didn't write it. So it, what happens is you, you tweak in your profile to be accurate with stuff that other people have written. Uh, that makes no sense. So what you need to do, go old school, get a piece of paper and, you know, print out 2,000 words or, you know, whatever of, of something you've written Dictate that to Dragon. This is the first thing you should do when you first ever set it up, really. Dictate 2,000 words to Dragon and then make the corrections. Correct what it got wrong. Save the profile. Do it again with a different 2,000 words. Make the corrections, save the profile, and you're done. You're going to have really high accuracy almost out of the gate. And then as long as you make corrections as you dictate in the future, it'll just keep getting better and better. And you'll get to the point where... You know, it, it's literally one or two words in every hundred. That's it. You know, 98%, 99% accuracy. But you've got to have the whole package. You've got to have the good mic. You've got to have the patience to stick with it. You've got to, you know, you've got to have everything in place for that to work. Yeah, that's a great tip. And also, I just think that exercise gets you used to using, for instance, the correction method, which does take a little bit of uh, getting used to. So Yeah, it even, it even gets you used to, to hearing your words being spoken out loud. You know, you, you actually are starting to take something you've written and, and dictate it. And at a very basic level, you're starting to go down that path. So I think I think it's one of the things you should do almost immediately. Okay, well, that's, you mentioned transcription a couple of times. So I suppose that's the ultimate yeah. way of wandering around and, uh, and dictating away from your desk, yeah. including... Uh, in your car or on your golf round or, or wherever so you can yeah uh, there's different ways of doing this isn't it? i mean they do again you can buy an expensive <laughs> box with a bit of kit oh, in it oh, of course um of course. or you can download an app on your phone or you, I, i've yep. got these zoom recorders which we use for um for podcasting mm -hmm. i should think they probably would work as well they're very high quality they would mics on there so yep. just talk us through the transcription how that works so transcription is is really the it's the nuclear weapon for for a writer of uh, dictation really because it's the ability to, to to just write anywhere anytime like you say in the car going for a walk um you know sitting waiting for your kid to come out of school whatever it is you know you you can take a spare 5 minutes a spare 10 minutes whatever it is and dictate and i mean it's one of those things where when you first do it and you feed the audio file into Dragon and you see the words magically appear on screen. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's just, it's one of those things where you think, this, this is just crazy how it can do this. And then you see the word count. And then you see the amount of words that you've dictated just sitting in the car or doing the washing up, you know, or do whatever it is, mowing the lawn. You know, while you've been doing something else, you've just spat out 1,500 words or 2,000 words or whatever. And that's where, for me, uh, dragon you know, or dictation in general gets really addictive because you suddenly go, "Holy cow! I can, you know, I don't need to take my laptop with me. I don't need to have, a, you know, a big microphone with me. I can just use, like you say, a little voice recorder." And um, it's it, for me, it's the holy grail of dictation. It really is. It's, it's the thing that you know tips most people, I think, over the edge when they when they realise they can do that and, and get ridiculously productive pretty much anywhere. I know of people who are working full-time jobs, you know, and they'll go off into their car during their lunch break and just have, you know, do 20 minutes of, of dictation into a voice recorder. They come home that night, put it into the computer and bang, there's, there's 3,000 words. It's crazy. You know, it, it, it's a fantastic facility. It's only in Dragon Premium and Dragon Professional. So if you, you mem mentioned all the different versions, if you bought Dragon Home, you're out of luck. It doesn't have it. Um, it's in Dragon for Mac, although it's very, very limited in Dragon for Mac. It, you can't... The problem with it in Dragon for Mac is you can't correct it. So it spits out the words into a, a rich text file or a Word document, 
and then you're just stuck with whatever it spits out. You can't correct it in any way uh, and have it learn. Uh, in the PC version, you can, so it'll continue to learn, and your transcription profile should get just as accurate as your dictation profile. Um, and that's it. You know, it's it's just a, a fantastic add-on to sitting at a desk. You know, having you know speaking into a microphone. Or, or and the other thing you can do with these little voice recorders, they don't have to be expensive. You mentioned the Zoom. The Zoom H1 you've got there? Uh, we've got, I've got a couple, but I'm using the 6 right. to record this, but I have a... Oh, I'll have to have a look. I, I think the, the Zoom is about, I think that's about 100 quid or 100 pounds or something like that. And uh, But you can pick up a, a pretty much any recorder. That looks like a, a big... This is our, one. our cheap one, So, but it's... Uh, this is, right. um, yeah, this is uh, H5. But these right. we use so these for professional podcast recordings, so they're probably above yeah. and beyond what you need for... All you need is a, is a is a mono recorder. That's it. Because Dragon wants mono. It doesn't care about stereo. Um, and anything by Sony or Olympus will do. Uh, I think there's one called the Sony PX. I think it's for free, 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 or something like that. That's really, you know, inexpensive. It's un, it's under fifty fifty dollars, fifty pounds, whatever. Um, and the quality is fantastic. You, you in my book, I actually have a like a a list i don't have it near to me um of the settings you should put into that recorder or similar recorders and as long as you do that and set it up like that bang that's it your accuracy will be pretty pretty fantastic as long as you then correct it as well afterwards yeah i was just going to ask about the correction so so is it a similar process so if i go off uh record into this Mm -hmm. dump in 1500 words yeah is it as if i've just spoken them so yes, I, it's exactly the same. At that point, I can then go say correct and go back to... Yes, okay. on the PC version, only yeah, yeah. on the PC yeah, version. I, I, in the Mac right. version, yeah. can't do it. But okay. in the PC version, it will spit the words out into something called DragonPad, which is like its own built-in text editor. And um, you can either right-click on a word or phrase and make the correction, or, and what I recommend everybody just does this, once it's spat out the the text and it's all on your screen um switch back to your microphone switch back to your dictation profile and just use your voice to correct so you just say correct that correct that word that phrase whatever and then choose whichever uh, options it gives you if it doesn't if it doesn't give you the correct word or phrase for a mistake then you can say spell that and you can then manually type what it should have been and then click train and it'll ask you to say it. And again, every time you do that, it'll record it. And a good example is Smashwords. You know, the, um, yeah, yeah. and Kobo is another one. It all, for me, it always gets Smashwords as two separate words. And Kobo was COBOL, you know, the programming oh, language. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and it, it always does it. So when it does that, I just say correct COBOL. It doesn't know what COBO is, but obviously it's a, it's a company. So what I do is I say, spell that. I spell it with a capital K because it's a company. I want it to remember that as well. And then I press train and I say Kobo. And it usually asks you, it depends on the version of the software. It sometimes asks you to do it three times. So you say Kobo, Kobo, Kobo in three different intonations. Bang, that's it. It's got it. And in in future, every time you do that uh, or you say that word, it'll get it or it should. You know, Smashwords is another one. It'll, It'll always then spit out the correct company name you know with the capital s and the two words together so uh, that's what you do and and you 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 do that with transcription and with dictation and you end up with a complete system that's com- you know as accurate across the board wow and uh, i was gonna ask you about accents i mean you're up in the northeast of england mm. actually you don't have a particularly strong accent i've got friends no. who come from Good. Uh, not too far away from you, who who do have strong accents, oh, yes. and of course, oh yes, the United States, yeah, <laughs> even even you might struggle to understand. Um, oh, all the time. I, actually, I've noticed oh, a couple more, a couple of drinks go down, it gets even worse, and the oh, can, it gets ten times worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah stand there bewildered. I, I, a guy came to fit a satellite dish to our house once, and I I, I couldn't understand a single word he said, no. and I felt like <laughs> oh, such please, it's not a just rude. Me. I felt terrible because I thought, how do I sustain a conversation with this guy? Because 
yeah. I, I don't know what he's saying to me. <laughs> but, can't come on fast. Um, but but how, do, how do people with stronger accents, and the US mm. can vary quite a lot, so the southern drawl yeah. and the, uh, the clipped um, nasally up in the, in the northeast. And, um, yep. Is Dragon okay at learning this, or do you find that some accents people really struggle with? Some are better than others. I've actually, I'm actually not from the Northeast, although I, I live up here and I've lived up here for a uh, while well, since my 20s. I'm originally from just outside Cardiff. So I've got a, a real mishmash of an accent. And, uh, you know, Dragon manages, it, it copes. But what I think it, it does best with is just a standardised, if you can call it that, North American accent. It, it seems to do just really well with a standard North American accent. If you do have, like you say, a southern drawl or like, you know, like a, like a, uh, I don't know, a really strong regional accent, that's where the training comes in. So that's where you get your piece of paper, you do 2,000 words of your own work, you correct it, you save it, you do it again. You might need to do it, you know, three, four times, maybe more than, than most people. But it'll it will get it will get you it will you know figure out this ah this is what he's saying, um, but it just might take a little bit more training. But on the whole, I found that there's actually a guy on YouTube uh, with a really really strong um, like Appalachian accent, and he, it, it it picks up everything he says absolutely everything because he's trained it so well, um, and it, it doesn't get much stronger than that. You know, there's another guy I was I was listening to a guy with a South African accent. And South African isn't even within the options, you know, when you set up your profile. Uh, it gives you the option for, say, a British standard accent or an Australian accent, Asian, all of these different accents. But, you know, South African wasn't even one of them. Uh, and he has it working perfectly as well. So I think it just comes down to the training. As long as you have, again, a good microphone and you train it properly, you should be fine. But the, the single biggest problem for most people is one they're using a, a really lousy microphone. You know, I, I know so many people who they put the software on and go, oh, I've plugged my microphone in and it's rubbish. Well, how much was your microphone? Five five pounds. Well, that's why, you know, it's, it's garbage in equals garbage out for a start. You have to view this as an investment in your writing business. You know, much like Facebook ads or cover design or whatever. This is, a, this is an investment in your writing business. So the, the computer has to be reasonable. The microphone has to be really good and you then have to commit and train train it you know and, and go for it you know and, and you'll you'll reap the benefits but that's the biggest problem i find with people is they they have a poor microphone and they just don't commit to it they have two or three goals go oh it's rubbish i'm quicker typing and they go back to typing and then they get rsi yeah <laughs> no i'm joking <laughs> but you know it, it's it's the sort of it's about that mindset it's about just committing to it and saying, I am going to do this and I'm going to view what I'm buying, not as a burden, but as an investment. And as long as you do all of that, you'll be off and running. Scott, it's been brilliant talking to you. And what's absolutely brilliant is you have done us a fantastic PDF cheat sheet on yes. introduction to Dragon. We're going to give the link away. Just talk us through the cheat sheet, what you've prepared for us. Yeah, so there's a little bit on there of everything. It really um, reiterates what we've said, firstly, about committing to this. Uh, there's a few microphone tips on there so everything from which ones to choose to um you know which uh, style to choose so so desktop headset but also you know usb wireless whatever so there's a bit on there um, and i've also put in uh, quite a few useful commands so some of the things that as long as you you kind of have these commands you, it, within dragon you're good to go you don't need to learn everything it can do for writers most of the time i think we're, we're just wanting to, to get a really good, a really clean first draft done. Um, so my, my belief is get, get as accurate as possible from the outset, um, know a few commands and concentrate on the writing. And, uh, and the cheat sheet kind of gets you through that as quickly as possible with as, as few steps as possible. That's great. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can click the link. I think in that corner up there is mm. where there's going to be a little uh, card that will come up and you click that will take you to, uh, to the page where you can download uh, Scott's brilliant cheat sheets. Well, I will keep our listeners in touch with how I get on. 
Um, I'm yeah, excited commit. about it. I, I, I would, commit. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, <laughs> honestly, with the same with everything in my life, I, I, I won't be one of those people who says you are gave up and then you quiz them. It yeah. turns out they hardly tried. I will, yeah. I will robustly uh, get to the end of, of this and hopefully be happy with it and make it work for I have me. I total but, um, faith in you. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Scott. Someone believes in me. Um, Great. No, it's, so, so your book, just quickly give that a plug because I think people want to take it to the next stage. It is a, a great investment to go alongside your, your investment in the software. Okay. It's called The Writer's Guide to Training Your Dragon. And it really exists because uh, there was there's plenty of books out there telling you maybe why you should dictate. But this, I, this was written because I, I wanted writers in particular to be able to just get really accurate straight out of the box. So it kind of hopefully shows you everything you need to know uh, in that regard and also can i quickly mention if you go to my website www.traininyourdragon.com um there's a there's a load of free video training on there as well you you click the link it says free video training put your email address in and i'll send you a link to a private page and there's about a, a good hour's worth of of step-by-step -step videos on there as well which people might find useful oh and i also have a free book on amazon called quick cheats for writing with Dragon, which uh, which expand a little bit on the cheat sheet. So there's, there's a few extra things in there. That one's free. Fantastic. Scott, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's been great. So there we go. Yeah, I mean, I've had a first first few sessions. It was interesting. I, I, I had Dragon and I bought probably the wrong product having sat through the interview with, uh, with Scott. Uh, I'm now using a better microphone, so something if you're watching on the YouTube version, you can see we're using these Rode NT-USB microphones, which are very nice. And Scott uh, said you really have to use good quality microphones, as he said in the interview. So I found that's made a difference. Um, I also use this thing. Again, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see. I don't know if you will be able to see. I, can, I might better hold it up into that picture, into that camera. No, I can't get that right. Is it in that? I'm being told it's in the picture. So this is a Zoom recorder, which I mentioned. Uh, and they're quite expensive. I guess this is probably about three hundred pounds, two, two or three hundred pounds. But you can get cheaper versions of it, but it's really good quality, and it's that quality that makes Dragon work and less hassle. So having moved over to that, because I do like to walk around the room, that's the whole point really for me of dictating is not sitting at a desk uh, with this type of desktop microphone. Um, however, I also find it a bit weird and. I write obviously at a certain pace and you speak at a certain pace and they're not the same pace. So that's the thing I'm finding the most difficult to get around. You sit there and you think the words, you're writing them down. The writing process slows you down a little bit. And the fact that you can speed up through dictation is obviously the point. But on the other hand, coming up with the words at that pace, I'm finding difficult. Yeah, and that's the reason I, I haven't really done anything with it. And also, I mean, I've, I've written... I don't know, two million words probably in the last four or five years, and that's developed a certain routine, almost like a physical routine. The kind of words start in my head, and then they transmit through my fingers, and I see them on the screen, and, and that's all part of the same process. And I think to to take out the uh, the middle stage yeah. where I'm using my my hands to to write the words, that to me feels like it would be quite a big jump. But that, again, that's all, you know, it's, all, it's only because I've never tried it before, really. I, I'm sure, and I've spoken to plenty of other people, I mean, Joanna Penn, it, and I think uses Dragon a little bit now, and other writers who've, you know, got up to 10,000 words a day. That is something that, you know, that they're doing that by dictating, um, and it is practice. It's getting used to something a little bit unusual. Yeah, yeah I'm certain that it's something you can train yourself to do. Um, training your dragon of course is scott's book uh so yeah i'm i'm sticking with it for a bit and uh we'll see how we we get on with it but so uh, yeah we'd love to hear your experiences we should post those in the um in the facebook group how people are getting on and don't forget scott has very kindly put together a really useful cheat sheet for you so if you're using dragon now or you want to try uh experimenting with it moving over to it, i would thoroughly recommend this and you can download the pdf cheat sheet by simply going to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash download 60 download 60 good and don't forget we've got our ebook our vault which contains everything that we've ever done uh, in it uh, in a handy ebook in which you can search uh, on as well so dragon obviously would come up in the future when that gets compiled into the next one and you can download the vault of uh, the first 58 odd episodes uh, by going to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash vault 
V-A-U-L-T, the thing you jump over in the gym. Do you jump over a vault or do you vault, you vault over something? Over a jump. Vault I think over you vault, it, yes. a vault is the verb, not the noun. I think I probably climbed <laughs> over it <laughs> when, I, when I was in the gym. But um, Good, excellent. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us. It's been uh, a useful episode. Thank you to our guest, Scott Baker. You can email us, podcast at selfpublishingformula.com. We'll be back again next week. You've been listening to the Self Publishing Formula podcast. Visit us at selfpublishingformula.com for more information, show notes, and links on today's topics. You can also sign up for our free video series on using Facebook ads to grow your mailing list. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.